I'm joined today by Melissa Ung, who's an M&A partner in our um, Singapore office. Melissa advises many international clients on inbound investment into Southeast Asia, and in particular, she focuses on the Indonesia market. Melissa, when you're advising an international corporate who's looking at an investment into Indonesia, what would you say are the three sort of headline considerations that that investor should take on board? Well, there's certainly quite a few considerations that uh, an investor would need to carefully analyse. But I'd say the top three things to take note of are foreign investment restrictions, merger control, as well as employment law issues. Thank you. And could you give us a little flavour maybe of how the foreign investment is regulated in Indonesia? Well, there are two key types of Indonesian companies. Um, a PMDN company, which is 100% locally owned, and a PMA company, which is wholly or partially owned by a foreigner. The body that regulates foreign investment into Indonesia is called the Indonesian Investment Coordinating Board, or the BKPM. The BKPM typically approves the establishment of um, PMA companies and also the transfer of shares um, by of two foreign investors in such companies. And are there different levels of restrictions for, for different kinds of investors? Yes, there are different levels of restrictions depending on the industry in which the operating company um, operates. Um, BKPM issued a revised negative investment list in 2010, which attaches lists of investments that are closed to foreign investment and um, industries where foreign investment is restricted. Great. You also mentioned um, merger controls. So, so what are the key points that investors need to take on board there? Well, Indonesia does have um, a competition law in place, the anti-monopoly law, um, which is enforced by the Business Competition Supervis Supervisory Commission, mm -hmm. or the KPPU. Um, in general, um, any combination of two or more companies in the same market um, that trigger specified market share, asset and revenue thresholds uh, cannot have an anti-competitive effect. And if um, they are likely to, to have um, such an impact, they need to be notified to the KPPU uh, as a post-completion requirement. It's important to note that um, it's not a suspensory notification and it can't be made a conditioned precedent to completion. Um, this caused buyers a, a whole lot of issues as they didn't really want to take the risk in completing a transaction um, if there was a risk that the KPPU might require the transaction to be unwound in the um, subsequently. Um, so to, to address this issue, the KPPU has recently um, issued guidelines in relation to a pre-completion consultation process, which allows um, a consulta consultation with the KPPU um, prior to completion, which can be made a CP to completion. And I think the third thing you mentioned was was employment um, challenges. So, so what are the key challenges there? Well, Indonesia has quite an unusual um, manpower law, which allows employees to um, terminate their employment and demand severance payments on a merger, consolidation or change of ownership of a company. Well, they haven't quite defined a change of ownership, um, but really you know, we're talking about a change of control of the company. Um, it's when, when a, an employee terminates his employment, um, he can demand severance payments, which will be calculated based on his last monthly salary, uh, multiplied by the number of years worked. And it's quite important to note that this is not an issue that can be structured around um, and could result in serious cost implications um, for a buyer, particularly with uh, a company that has a large and long-serving workforce. Sure. Thank you very much.